greetings. Well, I had a nifty clever analogy ready to talk about in part two. But I honestly have no peace in my heart to make light of the most serious topic I can imagine. The annihilation of more than half, no, the vast majority, of all mankind. Yeah, that kind of wipes the grin off of my face. You see, there is only one hope for mankind. But it does not result in things going back to the way they were. The only hope is to see the cancer and recognize it was foretold. And seek the guidance of the God who has warned us of the cancer. Even the world knows that something is happening. About like a blind man who can smell the smoke and feel the heat and know there is a dangerous fire somewhere near him, but all he can do is wonder which way is safe to run. And even hearing that truth, the liberals who see this will be forced by their conditioning to focus about how enabled and equal blind people are. You see, there are many forms of blindness, all of them disabling, in the loss of ability to perceive reality. We fool ourselves that at 40 we are as good as we were at 30, and at 50 we fool ourselves that we're as strong as we ever were at 40. And perhaps in one way or another you have improved through discipline and effort. But if you refuse to see that you are closer to death than you were 10 or 20 years earlier, you truly are just lying to yourself. And what does that have to do with the cancer of part one? That is the, sound of inevitability. the world, the world of science, the world of freedom, the world of technology, the world of safety, the world of peace, the cancer seeks to destroy all of that, my friend. And the cancer is unstoppable. The cancer is unstoppable because the only solution is unthinkable. Even the usage of three simple words will cause a visceral repulsion, and rightly so. The final solution. The very words are repulsive to me. I cannot imagine the stiffening reaction that anyone of Hebrew descent feels when they hear those evil words. And to be absolutely clear, the solution I refer to is to stop the Islamic cancer. And it is because civilized and rational men cannot consider any such final solution that the course of humanity is set in ever-hardening concrete. There is no solution good and moral rational men can consider. Islam is a cancerous religion, in every sense of the word cancer. And God is going to give all men one final chance, to join the cancer or reject submission to the cancer. God is going to allow the cancer to grow. God revealed almost 2,000 years ago just how far Islam would grow. And God revealed the Mahdi and his athletic supporter Issa. Only God called them the Antichrist and false prophet. And what God has foretold will happen. And bright people, smart people, Liberals who think they know best will be utterly unable to even see the events happening as they go down. Don't think so? You only need to look back one week. Before the ambassador's body was cold, liberals were apologizing to the Mohammedans who committed murder. Disregard the fact it was Mohammedans who attacked and murdered the ambassador. The savage animals of Islam tossed out feigned offense at some YouTube video. Oh dear, I wonder if Mohammed's dancing demons will take offense at that. Our president and secretary 
both apologized for the cancer being irritated and inflamed. I am surprised they did not blame the Tea Party and Rush Limbaugh and all Christians everywhere while they were busy kissing Mohammed's sphincter ring. But I digress. But imagine for the moment that liberals stop snorting cocaine and cow manure long enough to recognize the cancer. Even if liberals could begin a statement without first reflexively muttering, War on women! War on women! Sane and rational human beings cannot and should never consider final solutions. That literally is above Obama's pay grade and will remain so forever. So humanity is literally incapable of combating this cancer of Islam. Yet God has already foretold how he will treat the cancer.